Hello, this is Sal from the Khan Academy, and this is just going to be a simple video on how I make videos. So first, just the equipment set up. I have a, uh, a Wacom tablet right over here. I think this is the this is the Intuos 4 tablet. Uh, I think this was I think like two or three hundred dollars. Uh, you can get a basic bamboo tablet for like eighty bucks, and it does the same thing. As you pay more money, you just get more writing surface area right over here. It functions as a mouse. This is my mouse, but more importantly. You get a pen with it, which comes with the tablet, and you can use that to, to actually write. Uh, I just have a completely standard, actually this is probably a below standard PC right over here. This was like the state of the art PC in 2008. And uh, this art program that I have right over here, this is Smooth Draw 3, this is, a pair, this is freeware. Uh, you can use any art program you want to. I like to use Smooth Draw because it's lightweight. I don't have the most powerful computer in the world, so it keeps the computer from freezing up and all of that. Some of the fancier art programs have all of this fancy stuff they do in the background. Smooth Draw 3 is kind of bare, bare bones. But it, at least you want it to be ideally bare bones or maybe you just want a much more powerful computer. But the minimum that you want is the ability for it to be pressure sensitive. So if we, on Smooth Draw 3 here, you see while I'm writing, I can write really lightly or I could write really dark. And so you can, it looks a little bit more artistic. Actually, if I take the felt tip pen right over here, I use this little, paintbrush thing. You could use whatever you want. And I put it at brush size 6. I set up some pastel colors right over here. And you can see you could write really lightly or you could write really dark. You can shade things in. And, and the reason why I like, why I think it's important for something to be pressure sensitive is when you write with it. So this is test writing right over here. It looks, it doesn't look like just computer writing. It looks or at least looks pretty close to like actual like it looks like a digital felt tip pen of some kind. So all I've done so far is I have this little pen tablet and I'm able to draw on this. So this isn't too different than what most kind of designers or artists would do in order to do some type of graphic design. But I haven't shown you how to actually make a video. The actual video production has happened with screen capture software. I use, I use Camtasia Recorder. It comes with Camtasia Studio. I think it costs two or, two or three hundred dollars for that. I believe there's other screen screen capture software, including some free ones. They all have different positives and negatives. You can test them out uh, with Camtasia. So I'll just start Camtasia Recorder here. And so you see it's going to capture everything it sees in this portion of the screen. I set it up at a 1280 by 720 uh, dimensions. And so when I make the video, it's just going to capture this part here. And that's why when you see a Khan Academy video, you don't see all this other stuff right over here. And so if I press record, what's it going to, it's going to start capturing everything that happens on the screen here, and it's going to capture my voice as captured by this microphone. Now the first like thousand Khan Academy videos I did, I used literally like a $20 Logitech USB microphone, and actually the sound was, was pretty decent. Uh, we've now upgraded, I, I think this is, this is a Samson microphone right here, it's about $200. What I found is, is that there's not a general, you know, I've tried some $30 microphones that work out just great, uh, and some $200 microphones or even $300 microphones that didn't work out so well, they had a little buzzing noise or whatever. Uh, this one seems to work well for me. Uh, both the Wacom tablet and the, the Samsung microphone, they, they're just both USB devices, you just plug them in. And so what you'll see is when I start recording this video, so I'm gonna press record right here, over, right over here on Camtasia, and I'm just gonna start where, making a video and you'll see that it, it captures everything and it records all the videos. So let me just show you a test video. Let me clear this first. So let's say, so let me adjust the volume a little bit. I press record. It'll give me a little bit of a countdown. I like to test my pen off the screen right here, the side of the recording region. And so now it's actually recording everything that I'm saying as part of this video. So this, this is a video. This is a video, three plus five is equal to eight. And I can change colors, I can underline the three in orange, I can underline the five in, well that's orange again, what's it, in purple, whatever I want, I'm just changing. I like, I, I tend to like these kind of pastel colors, they have the feel of a, of a pastel chalk on, on top of a chalkboard. And you'll see when I'm done recording this video, the video got produced. And I can actually play the video. Just my pen off the screen right here. That's not in the recording. Room. So that's not me talking. That's so the video I'm talking. Recording everything that I'm saying is part of this video. So this, this is a video. This is a video. Three plus five is equal to eight. And I can change colors. I can underline the three in orange. And once you're, if you're happy with it, you can literally just click save. 
Uh, it'll, it'll offer you to edit it in Camtasia Studio and all of that, but I just save it as an AVI file. And then once it's saved as an AVI file, you can actually upload those directly to YouTube if you want, or you can later process it and edit it if you want to. I tend to not process or edit the videos unless I can. I made some error and I can fix that fairly easily. And yeah, so you just save it and, and, and you upload it. Uh, that's the technical part of making a video, uh, and, and hopefully that's not too difficult. If you already have a PC, it's we're literally talking about a couple of hundred dollars of equipment and, and software, and actually you could probably get the software for free, shareware software, whatever else. Now about the subjective parts about making a video. For me personally, and it, it might vary from, from, from everyone who, who does videos, I'm a big believer, and uh, we've gotten some feedback from our, our user base to this effect, uh, they like the conversational nature of the video. The videos are literally exactly the way I'm talking right now. And so for me, uh, the way that I, I prepare the videos is I, I, I read up a lot. If, if I'm doing something, if I'm doing an algebra worked example, then that doesn't require a lot of preparation. I can kind of work through the problem in, in real time. But if I'm doing, say, a history video, I'll read a bunch of stuff. I'll, I'll look for a bunch of public domain documents and maps and pictures on the web. Um, and what's neat about these art programs is you can copy and paste you can you can copy and paste things onto this. And let me show you. Let's say I'm I'm doing a so let me bring out a web browser. As you can see, this computer is not state of the art. But let's say you let me, so let's say I wanted a a map of Europe. I actually am doing uh, I'm, I am doing videos on World War One right now. And so I'll do a search for Europe 1914. And then I'll also search on the word public domain, just so I make sure I get a map that I can use. So I do a search for that, and then I do a search on images, and most of these are, see, see Wikimedia Commons. This is Europe at the beginning of World War I. I can go to that page, and I can verify. I can look at the licensing, and I can verify right over here that this is a creative, co this is a public domain map. So I can literally take this map, I can copy the image, I can paste it right over here. So I can paste it right over here onto my art program. So let me change the pen. Onto my art program. And now if I wanna talk about World War I, I can start recording, I can get my screen thing up, screen capture, and I can talk about, I can talk about, I can mark up this map. I can say, look, Germany had to fight two fronts in World War I. It had the Western Front right over here. It had the Eastern Front right over here, which was huge. And because the Eastern Front was huge, you couldn't do trench warfare, so it was a much more fluid front. And you can see, you can start taking things off of the web that, that, that you have the rights to or that have no licensing terms associated with them and, and, and also mark them up. So once you get the technical stuff down, uh, my advice is uh, try to do as much preparation, so a lot, as much reading as possible, distill the thoughts in your own brain. If it helps you, take notes, write your notes out multiple, multiple times, uh, and then try to make a video. When you make the video, uh, I've often erred on the side of doing these long videos. I don't think that's a good idea. The shorter the videos are better. I think the optimal is about three or four minutes. It'll minimize the, the, your chances of making a mistake. It'll allow you to be a little more, more natural because you won't be stressed about all the things that you, you actually have to talk about. And uh, focus on, on the, you know, uh, the underlying intuition on things. I think that's what people really crave. They don't want to just get some superficial formulas or superficial facts. They want to get deep meaning. Uh, they want to understand it as your brain understands it. That's why I'm not a big fan of the, of the, of the scripted videos. Uh, oftentimes, you can tell when someone's reading versus when they're thinking. And so I think people will appreciate if they see, wow, you're thinking through this. You're actually reasoning through why you couldn't have trench warfare on the Eastern Front or why completing the square actually leads you, gets you uh, uh, the quadratic formula. Uh, as I think the tone, everyone has different styles and tones, but uh, as natural as possible, let yourself be as free as possible. I actually force myself to smile often before the videos. Uh, uh, it, it actually will change your mood and maybe I should, <laughs> I should so, but it, laugh at the videos if, if, if you can, whatever, whatever you can. And, and uh, the one thing I've also found is it's very easy to freeze up, to press record. And what I often do is I, I delude myself. I convince myself, okay, Sal, don't worry about the next video. Just do a practice run. And when you do a practice run, it actually makes you a lot less stressed. And you just do the video. And then when you're done with it, at like seven or eight minutes later, you're like, hey, you know, that, that wasn't so bad. And, and you're probably going to be more critical of yourself than you need to be. We all are. Uh, upload it or show it to some friends. And I think they're going to find that all those things that you thought, you know, when you said, um, that one time, I mean, you should try to not say, um, if you can. 
but when you you know you stuttered at one time or you made that you, you went back and picked up one mistake, um, you'll find that people don't mind it as much as you thought. And sometimes they actually thought it was positive. It was a positive thing for the for the video. So with that, let you go. Um, I look forward to seeing the type of videos that uh, that, that y'all produce.